You know what we haven't worked with in a long time? Fish. We've just been, you know, on the mainland doing just, just chilling, just relaxing. There's a whole world underneath. We're going to explore two dishes made with mackerel. In Korean, we call it kodunga. And kodunga is probably Korea's uh, most popular go-to fish on like an everyday basis. You know, my dad turned pescatarian and we had kodunga at least three times a week. So I know this fish. I know how to cook it. I know the little pro tips to prevent the oil from splattering from not. And... First things first, we're gonna make some rice because of course we need the rice. And there's a reason I'm showing you this. So when you first put your rice into your rice bowl, you pour water into it, all right? That first rinse you can just throw out because there might be a lot of dirt and like, you're gonna see this cloudy mixture. In Korea, we call this saltimul. And it basically has a good mixture of starch. So I'm gonna just pour the water out into here. And as a side note, for a more delicious rice, two or three pieces of dashima, natural salt from the seaweed. It's gonna very gently season that water. Put this into a rice cooker and back to the fish. At least my local market had already gutted this. So there's still a little few things that we need to do. Just use some kitchen scissors, cut it off. Same with this side fin. And then on the very bottom, you can trim this one off as well. And just repeat on the other side. All right, and if you take a look on the inside, you can tell how fresh this fish is by the color of that bloodline right down the middle. This one looks like it's been frozen and then dethawed at the market, which is okay. If it's butchered fresh, you're gonna see like a nice red here. And the last thing, there's gonna be this black lining. I think the market already took it off, but if you see here, you wanna take this part off. So I'm gonna give this one quick rinse, and then we're gonna simply soak it in this rice water. Nice. And the starch in the rice water does a great job in kind of grabbing out um, maybe like 75, 80% of uh, any fishy smell in the meat. And we'll soak it in here for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we'll drain this out and then we'll just give it one final rinse. Just lay down a few paper towels, then put your mackerel on top, pat it down with some more paper towels. Most people in the West, when they eat fish, they like it like deboned and have it as a filet. But in Asian dishes, we usually cook it with the bone in. It gives flavor to the meat. And then the other thing, it's a lot easier to pull out once it's cooked. Add one tablespoon of flour. And this flour does two things. First, it leads to very crispy skin, which we all like on fish. I think that's universal. And number two, this flour, it keeps all that fish oil from splattering everywhere in the frying pan. So money. And this is really all you need. Like my mom will do it this way. But there's a restaurant right near the block that mixes in some instant curry powder. I'm gonna put it in equal parts. All right. And remember I told you that rice water took around 70% of that fish smell out. Well, this is gonna finish it off, like do the other 30%. And then just give this a, a good coating. Give a little spanking to knock off the extra and then coat the other side. All right, that looks good to me. And you can also cut this down the line so you get two pieces. Let's get this frying pan hot. I'm gonna put this on a medium high at first. All right, and once that oil is hot, I'm gonna put our fish down. Oh yeah. And because of that flour, if you take a look, you don't see that oil splattering. And getting everything to smell like fish oil, right? <laughs> so let's give it one minute on the, on the backside. And after about one minute, let's reduce this to low heat. Beautiful. I'll just wipe out some of the extra oil. And this is not a steak, you can move it around. It's all right, hey, hey, it's all right. A lot of those Master Chef episodes, it feels like you're gonna die if you flip your steak more than once. Relax. Let's check to see if it's grilled nicely. Oh, that's nice. Simple as that. There's really nothing to garnish this with other than a nice bowl of rice. Oh, I should show you the rice. You know this is pronounced cuckoo in Korean. I always thought it was cuckoo. It's not, it's cuckoo. <laughs> now that your mind is blown, let's take a look at the rice. Wow. Remember I said it was gonna look a little bit more juicy and sticky. Let's take out the dashima pieces. We can just, we can just toss this. Do you hear that? Oh my gosh. Maybe the right word is the rice is more dewy. It's like kind of more sticky, dewy. I'm learning a lot from helping Katie with her face mask service. You know, like jondok jondok skin. I'm trying to write that in English, maybe it is dewy. <laughs> All right, and then there's that middle bone that I was talking to you about earlier. I'm gonna just use my hands. Oh, there's a lot of leftovers. Go back. 
and these hidden morsels you eat a little bit later. And then guys, this is all just beautiful meat. And you get a piece like this, and you see there's a little like fish bone here. This one, honestly, you can just crunch and eat this. It's very soft, but you know, you can take it out if you want. You guys, put it over some rice. All right, and then bon appetit. <laughs> no fishy smell at all. Meat is firm, nice chew to it. And then really, if you want to eat the Korean way, just treat this like a crab and just have fun <laughs> picking away at the different parts of it, right? Like now, you know this one's gonna have curry. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm eating like a mukbang. And just eating fish and rice like this, this is like reminds me of Sunday mornings with my dad. My mom would go out to church or something, we just cook up some fish and um, just enjoy. Alrighty, and this next dish is one of my mom's favorite dishes. She loves to eat it. It's her comfort food. It's spicy braised mackerel with Korean radish. So clean this out just the way that I showed you before. Then take out your pinky and you see that second crease right there. That's about how long we want to cut each piece. Put this in a bowl for now. All right, then we have our Korean radish, which right now is kind of looking like a dinosaur egg. Measure one full finger up to here and we'll use that much. All right. Looks good. Let's peel this. And this Korean radish, um, it's going to make the broth taste good, but it's also going to keep the fish from burning because we're going to layer it on the bottom. Not too thin. All right, something like that, or maybe the width of your pinky nail. <laughs> I'm going to cut a few uh, into moon pieces, right down in half. All right, and then a foreign piece of spring onion. And now the most important thing, the ratio to my... Oh, what is that? Oh, this green onion. <laughs> All right, got a mat up here. Four tablespoons of tablespoon of soy sauce that's one and four one tablespoon of gochukaru then this is korean red chili pepper paste gochujang not karu two tablespoons of this this is one and the second one good two tablespoons of honey oh this is gonna take forever I've truly turned into a korean this pali pali fast fast mentality <laughs> all right two tablespoons that's one why am I always running out of ingredients? Ah, that's how you guys know I really do cook off camera too. All right, two tablespoons. Then two tablespoons of mirin or any cooking wine or white wine. This will get rid of that fish smell. That's one and two. All right, and then one teaspoon of minced garlic. This will also help. Hit it with some black pepper. Mix this up, give it a taste. You know it's gonna taste good. Wow. All right, so now we're ready. I know, very simple. Let's put our Korean radish, or moo as it's called. Let's put our mackerel on top. Put our spring onions over. Then let's add in our sauce. Next thing, we have one full cup of water. Just put it into here so you get more of the, get all of that marinade in there and pour it in. And this way there's some liquid to start the braising. Doesn't look so appetizing now, but be patient, young grasshopper. High heat, we wanna bring it up to boil. Lid on. And once it comes to boil, you'll see that lovely red color that we're used to seeing. I'll just move it around so that the fish pieces are dunked as well. Good. Put the lid back on. And let's reduce the heat to a medium. And we'll let the liquid braise down into something real, real finesse. All right, timer's up. Let's open it up. Wow. And now if you take a look, the sauce is reduced by a lot. And it, uh, it, it just looks amazing. Give it another test. Bloop. Yeah, very good. It's ready. I'm going to give a quick taste. Like when you braise anything, in the beginning the broth tastes a little bit like off balance. But as it reduces and concentrates, and you see those big bubbles coming up, it tastes really good. Take one of the moo pieces, put one of the fish on top, braising sauce over the top. Hit it with a little bit of spring onions. And here's your kodungo jorin. But who am I kidding? No one plates like this. <laughs> I'm gonna just slide everything in here. All right, we're straight down the middle. Good. And this is really one of those ugly, very ugly, but tasty dishes. I mean, it just looks pretty red, but the flavors are phenomenal. Let's grab our mackerel piece here. And I just want to show you how beautiful this looks. All right, my favorite part, y'all ready? Oh, yes. Get a little bit of the sauce on there on both pieces get it onto your rice big scoop like that and wow that's amazing and to be honest i actually like this even more <laughs> i've done this in another recipe but this is just a korean radish right 
So neighbors, what did you think? It's a little bit different, right? It may be used to like a, a filet of a fish, um, not filet of fish, but this is how Koreans like to eat it at home, especially because, you know, our main staple is rice. So if you see some fresh mackerel on sale, get the whole fish and uh, try one or the other. You'll love it. But there is one skill requirement. If you want to eat fish like this, your chopstick skills got to be on point. If you don't know how to do it, you're going to get all the bones stuck in your neck. You got to pop them out.